presupposes, of course, that your desire for possession is based upon your aspiration for greater liberty. For example, you feel that the possession of more money, lands, or friends will make you happier, and your desire for possession of these things arises from a conviction that their possession will bring you liberty and happiness. For effort to possess, you will discover that the thing you most and ultimately need is to be, always, not spasmodically, your best self. That self which understands that the mistakes of those you love are simply misunderstandings. Your feeling that greater possessions, no matter of what kind they may be, will of themselves bring you contentment or happiness, is a misunderstanding. No person, place, or thing can give you happiness. They may give you cause for happiness and a feeling of contentment, but the joy of living comes from within. Therefore, it is here recommended, rather than otherwise, that you should make the effort to obtain the things which you feel will bring you joy, provided, as previously stated, that your desires are in accord with the joy of living. It is also desired, in this volume, to suggest the possibilities in store for all who make persistent effort to understand the law of visualization and make practical application of this knowledge on whatever plane he or she may be. The word effort, as here employed, is not intended to convey the idea of strain. All study and meditation should be without strain or tension. It has been my endeavour to show that by starting at the beginning of the creative action or the mental picture, certain corresponding results are sure to follow. While the laws of the universe cannot be altered, they can be made to work under specific conditions thereby producing results for individual advancement which cannot be obtained under the spontaneous working of the law provided by nature. However far the suggestions I have given you of the possibilities in store for you through visualizing may carry you beyond your past experience, they nowhere break the continuity of the law of cause and effect. If, through the suggestions given here, anyone is brought to realize that their mind is a center through and in which all power there is, is in operation, simply waiting to be given direction in the one and only way through which it can take specific action, and this means reaction in concrete or physical form, then the mission to which this book is dedicated has been fulfilled. Try to remember that the picture you think, feel and see is reflected into the universal mind and by the natural law of reciprocal action must return to you in either spiritual or physical form. Knowledge of this law of reciprocal action between the individual and the universal mind opens to you free access to all you may wish to possess or to be. It must be steadfastly borne in mind that all this can only be true for the individual who recognizes that they derive their power to make an abiding mental picture from the all-originating universal spirit of life, God, and can be used constructively only so long as it is employed and retained in harmony with the nature of the spirit which originated it. To ensure this, there must be no inversion of the thought of the individual regarding their relationship to this universal originating spirit which is that of a son or daughter, through which the parent mind acts and reacts. Thus conditioned, whatever you think and feel yourself to be, the creative spirit of life is bound to faithfully reproduce in a corresponding reaction. This is the great reason for picturing yourself and your affairs as you wish them to be as existing facts, though invisible to the physical eye, and live in your picture. An honest endeavour to do this, always recognising that your own mind is a projection of the originating spirit, will prove to you that the best there is, is yours in all your ways. End of foreword. The exercise of the visualising faculty keeps your mind in order, and attracts to you the things you need to make life more enjoyable in an orderly way. If you train yourself in practice of deliberately picturing your desire and carefully examining it, you will soon find that your thought and desires come and proceed in more orderly procession than ever before. Having reached a state of ordered mentality, you are no longer in a constant state of mental hurry. Hurry is fear, and consequently destructive. In other words, when your understanding grasps the power to visualize your heart's desire and hold it with your will, it attracts to you all things requisite to the fulfillment of that picture by the harmonious vibrations of the law of attraction. You realize that since order is heaven's first law, and visualization places things in the natural element, then it must be a heavenly thing to visualize. 
Everyone visualizes, whether they know it or not. Visualizing is the great secret of success. The conscious use of this great power attracts to you greatly multiplied resources, intensifies your wisdom, and enables you to make use of advantages which you formerly failed to recognize. We now fly through the air, not because anyone has been able to change the laws of nature, but because the inventor of the flying machine learned how to apply nature's laws, and by making orderly use of them produced the desired result. So far as natural forces are concerned, nothing has changed since the beginning. There were no airplanes in the year one, because those of that generation could not conceive the idea as a practical working possibility. It has not yet been done, was the argument, and it cannot be done. Yet the laws and materials for practical flying machines existed then as now. Troward tells us that the great lesson he learned from the airplane and wireless telegraphy is the triumph of principle over precedent, and the working of an idea to its logical conclusion in spite of accumulated testimony of all past experience. With such an example before you, can you not realize that still greater secrets may be disclosed? Also, that you hold the key within yourself with which to unlock the secret chamber that contains your heart's desire. All that is necessary in order that you may use this key and make your life exactly what you wish it to be is a careful inquiry into the unseen causes which stand back of every external and visible condition. Then bring these unseen causes into harmony with your conception, and you will find that you can make practical working realities of possibilities which at present seem but fantastic dreams. We all know that the balloon was the forefather of the airplane. In 1766, Henry Cavendish, an English nobleman, proved that hydrogen gas was seven times lighter than atmospheric air. From that discovery, the balloon came into existence, and from the ordinary balloon, the dirigible, a cigar-shaped airship, was evolved. Study of aeronautics and the laws of aerial locomotion of birds and projectiles led to the belief that mechanism could be evolved by which heavier-than-air machines could be made to travel from place to place, and remain in the air by the maintenance of great speed which would overcome by propulsive force the ordinary law of gravitation. Professor Langley of Washington, who developed much of the theory which others afterwards improved, was subjected to much derision when he sent a model airplane up, only to have it bury its nose in the muddy waters of the Potomac. But the Wright brothers, who experimented in the latter part of the 19th century, realized the possibility of traveling through the air in a machine that had no gas bag. They saw themselves enjoying this mode of transportation with great facility. It is said that one of the brothers would tell the other, when their varied experiments did not turn out as they expected, It's all right, brother. I can see myself riding in that machine, and it travels easily and steadily. Those Wright brothers knew what they wanted, and kept their pictures constantly before them. In visualizing, or making a mental picture, you are not endeavoring to change the laws of nature. You are fulfilling them. Your object in visualizing is to bring things into regular order, both mentally and physically. When you realize that this method of employing the creative power brings your desires, one after another, into practical material accomplishment, your confidence in a mysterious but unfailing law of attraction, which has its central power station in the very heart of your word picture, becomes supreme. Nothing can shake it. You never feel that it is necessary to take anything from anybody else. You have learned that asking and seeking, have receiving and finding, is their correlatives. You know that all you have to do is to start the plastic substance of the universe flowing into the thought moulds your picture desire provides. End of chapter 1 Chapter 2 How to attract to yourself the things you desire The power within you which enables you to form a thought picture is the starting point of all there is. In its original state it is the undifferentiated formless substance of life. Your thought picture forms the mould, so to speak, into which this formless substance takes shape. Visualising, or mentally seeing things and conditions as you wish them to be, is the condensing, the specialising power in you that might be illustrated by the lens of a magic lantern. The magic lantern is one of the best symbols of this imaging faculty. It illustrates the working of the creative spirit on the plane of the initiative and selection 
or in its concentrated specializing form in a remarkably clear manner this picture slide illustrates your own mental picture invisible in the lantern of your mind until you turn on the light of your will that is to say you light up your desire with absolute faith that the creative spirit of life in you is doing the work by the steady flow of light of the will on the spirit your desired picture is projected upon the screen of the physical world an exact reproduction of the pictured slide in your mind visualizing without a will sufficiently steady to inhibit every thought and feeling contrary to your picture would be as useless as a magic lantern without the light on the other hand if your will is sufficiently developed to hold your picture in thought and feeling without any ifs simply realizing that your thought is the great attracting power then your mental picture is as certain to be projected upon the screen of your physical world as any pictured slide put into the best magic lantern ever made try projecting the picture in a magic lantern with a light that is constantly shifting from one side to the other and you will have the effect of an uncertain will it is as necessary that you should always stand back of your picture with a strong steady will as it is to have a strong steady light back of a picture slide the joyous assurance with which you can make your picture is the very powerful magnet of faith and nothing can obliterate it you are happier than you ever were because you have learned to know where your source of supply is and you rely upon its never failing response to your given direction when all is said and done happiness is the one thing which every human being wants and the study of visualization enables you to get more out of life than you ever enjoyed before increasing possibilities keep opening out more and more before you a businessman once told me that since practicing visualization and forming the habit of devoting a few minutes each day to thinking about his work as he desired it to be in a large broad way his business had more than doubled in six months his method was to go into a room every morning before breakfast and take a mental inventory of his business as he had left it the night before and then enlarge upon it he said he expanded and expanded in this way until his affairs were in remarkably successful condition he would see himself in his office doing everything that he wanted done his occupation required him to meet many strangers every day in his mental picture he saw himself meeting these people understanding their needs and supplying them in just the way they wished this habit he said had strengthened and steadied his will in an almost inconceivable manner furthermore by thus mentally seeing things as he wished them to be he had acquired the confident feeling that a certain creative power was exercising itself for him and through him for the purpose of improving his little world when you first begin to visualize seriously you may feel as many others do that someone else may be forming the same picture you are and that naturally would not suit your purpose do not give yourself any unnecessary concern about this simply try to realize that your picture is an orderly exercise of the universal creative power specifically applied then you may be sure that no one can work in opposition to you the universal law of harmony prevents this endeavor to bear in mind that your mental picture is universal mind exercising its inherent powers of initiative and selection specifically god or universal mind made man for the specific purpose of differentiating himself through him everything that is came into existence in this same way by this self-same law of self-differentiation and for the same purpose first the idea the mental picture or the prototype of the thing which is the thing itself in its incipiency or plastic form the great architect of the universe contemplated himself as manifesting through his polar opposite matter and the idea expanded and projected itself until we have a world many worlds many people ask but why should we have a physical world at all the answer is because it is the nature of originating substance to solidify under directivity rather than activity just as it is the nature of wax to harden when it becomes cold or plaster of paris to become firm and solid when exposed to the air your picture in this same divine substance in its fluent state taking shape through the individualized center of divine operation your mind and there is no power to prevent this combination of spiritual substance from becoming physical form it is the nature of spirit to complete its work and an idea is not complete until it has made for itself a vehicle 
nothing can prevent your picture from coming into concrete form except the same power which gave it birth yourself suppose you wish to have a more orderly room you look about your room and the idea of order suggests boxes closets shelves hooks and so forth the box the closet the hooks all are concrete ideas of order vehicles through which order and harmony suggest themselves end of chapter two